Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hello, it's 9 p.m. in Djibouti. It's time to the English news edition. And for tonight, here are the headlines. Successful cooperation. Ali Sabiya growing region. And a hundred of migrants disappeared after a sunny of the Libya. Hello and welcome again. The official Chan match at the Gulet Stadium this afternoon between the Djibouti and the Ethiopian team under 20 years of age ended with a score of one goal to zero for Ethiopia. This match is part of the qualifying rounds for the African Championship for young local players up to 20 years of age. The Red Sea Sharks and the Ethiopian team showed a quality and exciting match. The next meeting tomorrow will be between the Somali and Uganda team. The Minister of Women and Family Affairs, Her Excellency Mumina Muhammad Hassan, headed a Djibouti delegation, made a working visit to Mauritius for 22-25 July 2019. The minister was received by her counterpart, Mrs. Fazila Jiwadirahu, Minister of Gender Equality, Child Development and Family Welfare, to exchange their respective experiences in gender equality, child development and protection in economic empowerment of women and girls and to establish South cooperation in these areas. During her visit, the Minister for Women and the Family also met with key figures including the Speaker of the National Assembly and the Parliamentary from the Mauritius Gender Countries. This working meeting allowed the Honorable Deputy Mrs. Aisha Mohammed to learn more about the operating mechanism and the mission of the Gender Cause in order to reflect or establishment of a similar mechanism within the Djibouti National Assembly. The Djibouti delegation led by the Ministry of Women and the Family also met with the Children's Rights Ombudsman, Mrs. Rita Venkatasamoy, who spared no effort to share with the delegation the achievement, achievement mission and functioning and its structure in the provision and protection of the rights of children against all forms of violence and abuse. In addition, the Minister for Women and the family was the guest of honor at the workshop on combating violence against children organized by the Children's Rights Ombudsman, during which the minister gave a committee speech on safeguarding human rights and in particular the rights of the children. To this end, the minister met with the official guest, namely the Minister of National Education, Human Resources, Tertiary Education and Scientific Research and the Minister of Justice and Human Rights. In addition, the minister had the opportunity to meet with the Director General of the Open University and Vice Chancellor of the University of Mauritius to discuss the continuing training full-time, part-time and distance learning provided to social workers and the possibilities of making it available to social workers in the Republic of Djibouti. As part of its visit, the Djibouti delegation had the opportunity to visit centers for abundant children, sexually abused children, social centers and women's empowerment. This working visit, study and exchange of experience was enriching and fruitful for the Djibouti delegation, which had to further extend and perpetuate its relations with Mauritius to benefit from their achievement in the various areas mentioned above. As part of the program to strengthen livelihoods and reduce vulnerability, the Kor Angar Fishermen's Cooperation Association wanted to mark the second consecutive day of solidarity bringing to a part of the population, in this case the families and patients staying in the hotel, hospital, in the Dikil region. To this end, the reception ceremony presided over by the president of the Kor Angar Cooperative, Mr. Hussein Ibrahim Ali, accompanied by his collaborators, was welcomed by the chief medical officer of the Dikil region, Deputy Prefect Fuad Abu Bakr, as well as the acting president, member of the executive bureau of the regional council, Mr. Abdi Mohamed Ege, and the president of the UNFD, Asma Hussein, and the deputy director of the region, to the Minister of Agriculture, Abdurrahman Bangir, 
The objective is to serve as close as possible to the communities to be attentive to the needs of the most vulnerable and provide to appropriate response with commitment and dedication. On Wednesday, July 24, 2019, elections were held for young parliamentarian from the Arab League states to the position of the president, first and second vice president of Arab children and a representative from Sudan, Kuwait and Jordan, respectively. The young parliamentarian from Djibouti applied for the position of vice president but were unable to obtain them. But Ms. Ilwad Idris and Mr. Khalid are members of two committees that have been set up, namely the Committee on the Rights and the Child and the Committee on Activities. The next session of the Arab Children Parliament will be held in February 2020 in Sharqa. A closing ceremony of the monitoring and evaluation training took place yesterday at INEP. This training lasts one week and brought together several executives from the public administration ministerial departments. Since, since 2012, the government has initiated national reform projects in several areas to which it has committed itself through reliable measures to develop the concept of administrative governance to make its administration efficient, accountable and competitive. The closing ceremony was presided over by the Executive Secretary for Administrative Reform, Mohamed Awali Dirin, and the Director of INAP, Mr. Shalmarke Idris, and followed by the presentation of certificates to participants. The participants are delighted with the successful completion of his training and hope to make it a reality while changing their daily lives in their administration by trying it with their colleagues. On his side, Executive Secretary Mohamed Awali explained in his intervention that twice a year these types of training are carried out for the benefits of public administrative staff. As part of a program to promote and protect human rights, the community management committees in Section 1 and 2 in Balbala T9 organized an awareness-raising ceremony on children's rights and the fight against FGM. This ceremony is organized in close collaboration with the National Union of Djibouti Women, UNFD, and the UNICEF. This ceremony is an initiation to promote young people's rights, such as obtaining a national identity card on refusing FGC for young girls or fighting drugs. The ceremony was attended by CDC officials, UNFD representatives, community leaders and representatives of women's and youth associations. The UNFD project coordinator recalled that this kind of solicitation is regularly organized to improve the rights of the child and do so to children and also to their parents because the family is the child's first education. The al Sabih region is in the spotlight in this weekend edition where due to the holidays we will go to discover our region and make discover or rediscover our magazines dedicated to this region and that will present to you every weekend. Thus, we will mention in the document that follow that you had the opportunity to follow for the first time during the month of Ramadan, the development of the al Sabih region, its economic potential that is reflected in the new dimension of the rapidly expanding southern economic capital. In the second document, we will see al Sabih other development poll his agricultural potential. The Asajog region is destined to become the really agricultural breadbasket of the country. The town of Asamu is indeed full of great agricultural potential of all kinds. It remains to open up this locality and offer it to ways and means to be able to take full advantage of for this wealth. Today, this has been achieved by with the new road inaugurated by the President of the Republic in linking Asamu to the capital of the region. And finally, in the third document, we will discover, we will evoke the history of the oldest medieval city in our country. This is Dazbio, who has managed to survive through the ages, while his peers are in the field of archaeology. Dazbio has managed to survive all eras, those of the caravan from Zela, the era of the railway that caused its decline with the creation of the port of Djibouti. And finally, with the final stop of the railway line that crossed the Asbio. So what's his secret? How did she manage to transcend time?
As part of the Strengthening Livelihoods and Reducing Vulnerability program, the Kor Angar Fishermen's Cooperative Association yesterday donated 100 kilograms in fresh fish to patients in hospitals in the city of Ali Sabi. To this end, the reception ceremony presided over by the president of the Kor Angar Cooperative, Mr. Hussein Ibrahim Ali, accompanied by his collaborators, was hosted by the president of the Regional Council of Ali Sabi, Mr. Omar Ahmed Wais, the deputy prefect Qadr Idris Sugi. The objective is to serve as close as possible to the communities, to be attentive to the needs of the most vulnerable and to provide the appropriate responses with commitment and dedication. An awareness workshop on the implementation of the National Strategic Awareness Plan to combat trafficking in persons and smuggling of migrants in collaboration with IOM with the financial support of the U.S. government was held in Ali Sabih. This workshop, chaired by the authority of the region in particular, the prefecture and the regional council brought together all the heads of the services concerned and representatives of the various armed forces. It should be recalled that the objective of, for this workshop was to focus on the fact on trafficking in human beings, forced labor, sexual exploitation, forced being, organ trafficking. And now moving on the international news. More than 100 migrants are reported missing after a shipwreck off the coast of Libya on Thursday. Nearly 150 others were rescued. According to the UN, this is the worst tragedy in the Mediterranean since the beginning of the year. Drama off the coast of Libya, a boat carrying 250 migrants was shipwrecked on Thursday, July 25, and more than 100 people are missing, according to the International Organization for Migration. The worst tragedy in the Mediterranean this year has just occurred, UN High Commissioner for Refugees Filippo Grandi said on Twitter. The shipwreck occurred off the Libyan city of Home, 120 kilometers east of the Libyan capital Tripoli, said Safa Misrahi, communication officer at the International Organization for Migration Office in Libya. According to her, 145 migrants were rescued by the Libyan Coast Guard and brought back to home. Some survivors reported that their boat had sunk and that there were still some 150 migrants on board, Safa Mislehi added. And this is it for this news. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful night.